You've all heard from each of the candidates on the table at the top. And whilst listening, some of you have been writing additional questions, for which I thank you. We are now at a time when I'm going to ask individuals who have submitted a question to ask that question. We have six areas that we're going to be covering. So it's uh, general employment, mental health, education, Uh, and poverty. That's the way the question seems to appear. And there was one last one which is about deportation. We'll start with general and I see we have someone from the Stop Search Reference Group, Muna, who wants to ask a question of each of the candidates, I believe. Muna. Uh, June will be walking around with a rolling mic. Could you wait until the microphone reaches you before you begin to speak. And could you try not to interrupt when the answers are being given, please? Thank you. Um, good evening. Um, my question is, what do these candidates know about the issues, concerns, and priorities of the racial minority communities, and how will they use this information if they are elected? Can we start from my mind, please? Okay, thank you. Um, what do I know? I don't know enough, that's for sure. Um, I've been... My church is, uh, is out in Broadston. That's the church where I go to worship on a Sunday morning. Um, absolutely stunned by the poverty that's out there from the groups that have come in and come to live in Leicester. Uh, to such a state where in Broadston we're having to provide food share to make sure that people have got enough to eat on a daily basis. That shouldn't be happening in a city like Leicester. We're not that badly off that we need to be uh, looking after people in this way and that charities need to be looking after people. I've got friends from um, the Sikh community who tell me uh, about their issues and about their problems. I've got friends in the Muslim community who have told me about their problems. And I've got friends in the Hindu community who have told me about their problems uh, and the, the lack of interaction or the difficulty of interaction between some of those groups uh, and the problems that happen, especially with the youths in those groups. The problems will only be solved with the likes of, of the groups that you have here, the interfaith groups, the various different places, um, the, the Sikh councils, the Muslim councils, and it will only be solved and addressed so long as those groups get enough funding to keep working and so long as those groups are able to put forward uh, a sensible um, prospect for their youth and for the youth of the, the city so that everybody feels that they can interact together and so that they're safe in the city and they feel safe in the city and that's the most important thing. We have to make sure that the people that were are happy enough to stand up, um, the volunteers that stand up to help the various different groups within the city have the ability to do that and have the funding to do that. And that's why I've said I want to devolve a certain amount of power, however much I can under the rules, to those community groups so that each community group knows what's happening. Because the people in Hamilton probably have no idea about the problems that exist in Braunston. The people in Beaumont Lees have no idea of the problems that happen in Highfield. But we need to make sure that those issues uh, are separated out from the town hall and set out to the people that need to know what's going on. Thank you. Uh, I should have said beforehand that we are going to be given two minutes uh, maximum to the response to the question. Okay. <laughs> we'll take five minutes back. You just, you just, you just stop me if I ramble. <laughs> okay, Barbara. Well, okay. Um, well, unfortunately, so uh, what's just been said, um, I live in Hamilton and represent Hamilton. Um, I actually come from Broadston, so that was a wrong way of saying things because uh, I know most of the city anyway, so um, we're one up already. 
Um, I believe that there is a lot of poverty in this city and there shouldn't be any poverty in this city. In fact, this city is quite rich, but it only belongs to the 1% and not the 99 so we need to change things around, as far as I'm concerned. It doesn't matter whether you're black, white, pink or green. It doesn't matter whether your backgrounds or where, 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 whether you've flown in, come on a boat or walked in or whatever. I believe that everybody should be entitled to their own identification. I know how hard and difficult it is to get hospital appointments, I know how hard it is to get doctor's appointments, and to be even acknowledged as a human being. It's terrible trying to get benefits when you come into this city, and we're certainly going to work out a better system to improve that because we know it's failing so much already. There are a lot of churches and a lot of chapels and a lot of temples up and down this city. It's fantastic, the diversity, but unfortunately, I do feel as though we're lacking something. And the something that's missing between us all is shareability. I think if we all share something that somebody else hasn't got, we're never going to go without ourselves. So, by giving is receiving, as far as I'm concerned. If I've got food in my cupboards, which I've done on a regular basis, and helped out people in my community because they haven't got any benefits, they've been sanctioned, it doesn't matter whether it's an Indian man or whether it's a white lady. They're going to get the same courteous as being able to feed from my table as anybody else. So, Although I like the diversity in this city, I think we need to work very closer with our groups because we've got lots of groups across the city that want to keep their own little ward and their own little patches. But I actually think that the doors and gates should have come open to everybody. And I would like to encourage everybody to open their doors to everybody so no one has to suffer in this city. But we, as a Tusk candidate, shall promise you that we will work this out a lot better. And that there do need to be additional homeless hostels in this city, which the Labour government have closed down, by the way, very recently, whilst in power in this city. And as you know, there are a lot of Asians, a lot of black men, a lot of white men, even single white ladies, are actually sitting on our streets in this city, homeless tonight. I raised this in the chambers many a times, along with my colleague, Councillor Nairon but it wasn't addressed. Yeah. And they say there is no homeless, but there certainly was. So it doesn't matter if you colour, we're going to help you all. Thank you. Thanks, Barbara. Well. Um, Thank you. Um, I want to draw on experience as a, a teacher and lecturer at Democracy University and also someone that's lived in South Africa. Um, I think, I'm going to take one word that Barbara said. I think it's fantastic what you said there about shareability. I said at an earlier hustings that there's a byline on less of one Leicester. And I think that's, that's a, appropriate for a city to get, have a, a, a vision. But I do perceive barriers. I do perceive walls between different communities. But they come together when they have the festivals on the street. And I think that's a great place to start. Because that's when people come together. It's colourful. It's vibrant, and it's fun. I want to get a bit more serious though, particularly from Muna, if I may. Um, the one thing that really does concern me um, in, in the community is, is how the Muslim community is viewed in the media, but I also say that I, I think a lot of the Muslim organizations have been very vocal putting their points across, because what is happening around the world puts, I think, sometimes pressure on the Muslim community. And I've, I've heard that from friends of, or students at the university, because of the news about ISIS. And the Muslim community, its voice must be heard in the media, because I don't think the media is allowing the Muslim voice to be heard. And I'm being absolutely straight with you because standing as mayor and standing as a conservative mayor, I believe in those principles, but I also stand as Paul Bremner. And I think you need to get to know the character of Bremner who stand as your mayor. And Barbara, 
I completely agree with your shareability. I think, I think that is a word we should go across this city because, in speaking to one or two people before this meeting, I think, um, I'm going to use the term black and minority groups, but you're not, you're in the majority. I felt downtrodden, have felt prejudice, have felt lack of opportunity. Why, if I'm in a job interview and there's another guy with the same skill and the other guy gets it, why? Because it's a white skin. And these are the things which I don't think is talked about enough, is not shared about enough. So Muna, let's get it in the open. Let's get it in the open and let's share it. Thank you. Oh, yes. Um, the question of uh, how well we know Leicester uh, is one that I think I've answered with some confidence. I know well. I've had the privilege of being elected representative on and off for uh, parts of this city, plus four years, the whole of the city, for the best part of 40 years. And at that time, you don't fail to have to engage and want to engage with the communities of the city. But um, I think it's right for us to remember that the city changes, its people change. <coughs> Their expectations change, and we need to reflect those changes. And it's not a case of us being able to say, well, we did this in the 1970s. <coughs> this is how things were in the 1980s. These were the problems of the 1990s. In fact, what we need to be doing is engaging with the city of the 21st century, not how things were decades ago. And that means a continued engagement with the communities of the city. It doesn't mean saying, well, I, I know it, I know you all, I, I know what you want. It, it isn't like that. As mayor, I have to, I've set up a community forum. Uh, I've tried to engage with people who are not just the usual suspects, not just the usual people you usually work with, to hear younger people, to hear people from different communities, to hear people from some of the newer communities in the university. We've got to recognise, you know, there are new, newer communities here that are not yet well established and uh, facing many of the challenges that people did in previous generations. Some the same, some different. But it is about a continued engagement, a continued dialogue, a continued listening to those communities that uh, enables whoever's elected as mayor to, uh, to actually reflect the, uh, the needs of <coughs> those communities. Thank you. After that. Um, I was born and raised uh, in Leicester, in the Hartfields area, in uh, the Melbourne Road, the Leventon Road areas. I've lived in and around Leicester all my life, apart from a few years studying, in, uh, studying and working in London. Uh, so I, I know uh, the city as well as most. Uh, but in terms of improving lives for ethnic minorities, I think it's the same solution as it is for everybody, which is education and jobs. Uh, when I grew up, we were poor. But a good education led me to a good job um, and uh, led me to a certain level of affluence. I mean, I'm not into souls to be rich, but I'm doing okay. If <laughs> only. Um, we, we need to make sure ed education is improved in this city. There's too many kids who uh, are abandoned. There's an insistence uh, in the education system that all kids must be academic. But not everybody's academic. I'd have loved to be a professional footballer, but I was rubbish. All the education in the world wouldn't have made me as, you know, as good as Wayne Rooney or uh, Frank Lampard. That's just not going to happen. Some kids are saying interesting. When I, when I was at school at Judge Meadow, uh, I was uh, temporarily put in uh, uh, class 8 of maths. Uh, and I sat, sat around watching these kids drawing cartoons for the whole of the maths lesson. And even at that age, I thought, what a waste. What a waste. Why are you forcing kids? to study academic subjects that they've got no interest in. They set themselves, well, if you, if you, if you allow us to learn a trade, we'd be interested. You're forcing us to study maths and history and uh, geography that I've got no interest in. So what do they do? They went straight on the dole and added to our growing dole queues. We need to offer more than academic uh, education to our kids. We need to offer vocational training. So even if our kids at 14 want to leave and study plumbing, carpentry, uh, uh, be an electrician, let them do it. Don't force them to sit in school for four years studying maths 
uh, and when they'll actually just be drawing cartoons. Education and then jobs. Now I've got to give uh, Peter Salty credit. I've given him a bit of stick for uh, spending four million pounds on that glorified garden. But he has appointed someone, I think it's in Helen Donnelly, who's, who's attracted uh, IBM to Leicester. And that's what we need to do. Uh, we need to encourage uh, the council to attract as many uh, high value jobs as possible. And it's jobs that uh, take people out of poverty. So education and uh, 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 jobs, are, I think, are two key uh, issues here. But one, one of the things I'd say is you need to create, uh, create an attractive environment. Now, as a, a driver, I hate driving to Leicester City Centre. It's a pain in the neck. They seem to do, they try to force you out of the city as a driver. They think by beating you the stick, you'll, you'll stop driving and catch a bus into the uh, city. You don't. I just stop driving. I just stop coming into Leicester City Centre. I thought, sod it, I'm not, I can't drive, I'm not coming because I'm not catching, I'm not sitting outside a bus stop for 15 minutes of cold, catch a bus. You've got, you've got to put, uh, add a bit of carrot uh, as, well as, as well as a stick to improve access to the city centre, to let the shops reopen, to energise the city centre, and then attract more in, inward investment that way. Um, what do I know about um, challenges that ethnic minorities face? Um, from, from Conversations with lots of different people, I've I've come to understand that um, that there is um, a massive amount of institutional discrimination and, uh, and just blatant racism uh, in the workplace, um, especially when it comes to applying for a job. Now, what I'd like to do from a top-down level at the council is introduce an application form which will remove the candidate's name completely. Um, so it just means that really the experience of the the applicant is the thing that, uh, that speaks volumes and it should speak volumes um, to ensure that uh, the best person gets the job. Um, and what I'd also like to do is I'd like to encourage a similar procedure um, to happen all around, uh, all around the city um, with, with uh, smaller, medium and even enterprise sized businesses to adopt a similar approach to, uh, to actual um, job applications uh, and even certify those, uh, those places that, uh, that do, uh, you know, who do have um, you do adopt it. That's that's uh, that's a sorry. <laughs> okay, thanks for that. I'm I'm going to try to see if I can get everyone beside me to actually stick to two minutes for the other questions. Yes. I would I will try. Um, so if I go and I probably I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs>